Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 6, titled License to Elongate. This was Danielle Panabaker's new episode that she directed, so her second episode ever. She did Godspeed last season. Yeah, let's go ahead and get right into this video. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode was most definitely mainly filler, as people say. I don't really use that term very often, but this, you could tell. You know, it wasn't completely main story, nothing really to with Ramsey till the end. Iris really wasn't in this episode, you just mainly had the story with Sue Dearborn, and that's not to take away from the episode, because I had great fun watching this episode. I thought it was very, very entertaining, and it was a nice sort of break, and you know, a different sort of episode. It was just a lot of fun. So, let's go ahead and break this episode down bit by bit and talk about the bits I liked and the bits I didn't like. Okay, so we obviously were on a break last week, so we're back and we pick up where we left off the week before with Wells revealing he knows stuff about the Monitor, he's going to take them down and that's where we start off the episode, in the tunnel. And so he essentially reveals that he thinks the Monitor is hiding out down here and that there is some sort of interdimensional portal, he says something like that, and he talks about how he's like a false god, he does this to all Earths to, you know, manipulate them and create fear on that Earth you know, then to destroy it, or I don't know what he truly believes, but Wells doesn't think he's doing this all for the right reason, which I think there is a possibility of that happening, but more likely than not, he's doing it, you know, for the real purpose that we've been teased with, that he's doing this to set up everyone for crisis to prepare them. Anyway, so he calls him a false god, and in this episode, Allegra later helps Wells in the episode, to try and find out how to break down this wall because this wall's got special properties and he's not able to just whack it down because you know if he does that I believe Central City could explode or something like that due to the material so yeah we start off the start of the episode Barry and everyone are all in the tunnel and they sort of reveal that yeah the monitor is maybe a bit shady more shady than you know Barry initially thought because I think as of before this episode Barry was sort of just following everything the Monitor did, he didn't really have any questions against him, unlike Oliver obviously, and obviously unlike Wells, but so it seems like maybe he might start to question the Monitor after this episode. Okay, so let's move on, so we have Chester P. Runk who returns in this episode, and he was pretty damn fun. Obviously his story wasn't that important to the overall plot of the season, this is where the filler stuff comes in, but we had some very nice sort of fun moments like I liked when he got out and he was just like going crazy around Star Labs. Just a great piece of fun to be honest. And Cecile tags along as per usual, you know, she doesn't really have a big role in the show as we've said many times. So, you know, she finds a little bit to do in this episode but nothing too much. But yeah, Chester was a pretty good addition to this episode. And so, like I said, Daniel Panabaker directed this episode and I was kind of surprised that there was more Killer Frost slash Caitlyn than I expected because normally when the people who are on the show, the cast, who direct, they tend to try and sit out of the episode because, you know, it is possible to direct yourself and act, like that's happened many times, like if you've seen films, like Clint Eastwood, he does that all the time, loads of actors do that, but in TV shows they tend to normally sit it out, but you know, there was more than I expected and there was barely any Iris which I found very curious, and obviously this episode wasn't heavily around Central City and heavily around Iris. However, I thought that it was a bit strange, and by the end of the episode when she popped up, I was like, Oh, Iris, hi. I'm not sure as to what the reasoning is for that. Maybe it's just simply, you know, they didn't want too many characters in this episode, because there was quite a lot of characters. You know, Chester is a new addition, and they, you know, maybe wanted to focus on him more, and have him with Cecile, and then you have all these pairings up, you have Wells and Allegra, but also you've got the main pairing which is Barry and Ralph in this episode, so maybe they thought, oh, too many people. Also, there was like no Cisco in this episode as well, which was very curious. But anyway, apparently there's going to be loads of virus next episode, which the ending teases, which we'll get to later in this video. So, Ralph and Barry, like I said, they're the main thing in this episode. They team up to find Sue Dearborn, and it turns out she is missing, or that's what we think. 
Not too sure as to how that's going to be going down, but they did recently actually cast Sue Dearborn. I'm not sure what actor is playing her, but I know there's tons of articles online, so you guys can go check it out. But anyway, so they're full on James Bond, the Sue Dearborn stuff is happening, they're trying to investigate. They're at this criminal party, and so we've got this sort of very James Bond esque villain in this episode. He was quite a lot of fun, and so they get caught as Barry turns into the Flash. So, you know, it's Barry trying to become the Flash, which actually causes them to fuck up in the episode, and that's not something that normally happens. It's normally the other way around. It would be normally Ralph who does that. So, you know, there's some stuff going on this episode which is different to normal. But I enjoyed it, and so they have to stop this villain and Ultraviolet. They've got some sort of weapon they called the Ring of Fire that could destroy Central City. So Ultraviolet returns, and she's sort of like the muscle for this guy, this villain, in this episode. And so we have all of that going on. That was great fun with Ralph and Barry, seeing them team up and tag along together. And then they have this massive fight, and the fight is kicked off by Barry, who is acting like he's drunk being the one to cause a fight and man it was so much fun seeing Grant playing drunk oh my god I literally was laughing so hard I was dying it was such a great scene I really loved it however the fight wasn't like too convincing on the side of the villain and Ralph like they cut so much you know that the guy whoever the villain was was like missing all his punches and stuff but anyway the Barry and Ultraviolet fight that was more convincing I really liked that but anyway, so that was so much fun seeing Drunk Barry, having the Mortal Kombat reference, and it was just a good scene. I really enjoyed that bit. And so also moving on back to Wells, so he's kind of mysterious towards the end of the episode because he's talking to Allegra, thanking her and such, but then he sort of lingers around. And at first I was like, oh, what is he doing? But then I was sort of like thinking as in regards to he said earlier in the episode Allegra reminded him of something so does he know a version of Allegra on another earth or is it he's lost someone and you know that's going to be revealed pretty soon but anyway it seems to be kind of a bit deep and I think there is more story to it and I think we might get to find that out in the next couple of episodes maybe when we reveal whatever's inside the monitor's place that he's trying to dig up and I think he's going to turn into Pariah who we've talked about before He's in Crisis, we've seen our first look in some of the new Crisis trailers, you can check out the videos on my channel where we break it down, I've explained Pariah in the past, so we think Nash Wells is going to turn into Pariah sometime in the next few episodes because he definitely links into Crisis because he knows so much about the Monitor, he's trying to stop the Monitor, he's trying to find out whatever's behind this wall, that's, you know, his mission. And so, by the end of the episode we have this Flash press conference, and this press conference is at the CCPD. So Barry gets a Medal of Honor, and that was such a surprise, and it was really touching. I actually did start tearing up, I'm not going to lie. And so he's going to die, so it was just such a great moment to honor him, and it was just a nice moment. Like, you weren't expecting that, and then he gets that in front of everyone, he's on live TV, everyone knows who Barry Allen is now. Such a great moment. Also, Elongated Man, that was the whole point of the sort of press conference to make him a new protector of Central City officially. So that was really nice. He gets his new logo, very comic book accurate. And, you know, he's going to be this sort of hero if the world does survive in crisis and Barry actually goes away or, you know, the Flash goes away as the whole rest of the world sees it. And so then we go towards the end of the episode and it's easy to miss this like it was in a past episode. But we get to see the black hole logo again. It was in a photo that Ralph showed to Iris. And so that was sort of the way the episode ended. And so black hole are going to come. Like they've been teased twice in two different photos. They've been very easy to miss. Paige, you pointed the first one out to me. But I actually spotted this one in the episode. And so it seems like they could potentially be the villains. Or the people who make the villain, whoever the back half of the season villain is, because that's not Ramsey, that's not Bloodwork, he's going away by crisis and there's going to be a new villain. And they've been teasing this black hole stuff very, very subtly. So does this lead to a new speedster villain, like Red Death, or like the Return of Godspeed as we teased at the start of episode 1 this season? Or is it just black hole as a whole? And so they are linked to Ultraviolet because 
they are the ones that trained Ultraviolet, that was hinted a few episodes back, and so Iris is going to be the one to investigate them, also investigate Ultraviolet. So it's very mysterious right now, but really looking forward to that stuff going into the back half. And then the ending scene of the episode, we had Ralph being attacked by Ramsey, and so Ramsey's looking like some sort of full on demon, but he attacks Ralph. And they get like flung off a balcony or something, I don't remember what it was. So is he trying to kill him? It seems like he probably is trying to kill him, but that's the cliffhanger and that's going to be carrying on into next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications as we try and reach 100,000 subscribers. We are 300 away or so. And I really, really can't wait. Also, I've got some announcements I think I'm going to do on a stream because as my channel reaches 100,000 subscribers, I've been like enabled to have this membership thing for the channel. So I'll mention that very soon, but I haven't really looked into it yet. But that's something exciting for the near future. So I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.